All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. February the 20th today. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope this message finds your family and your friends doing well as well. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my social media accounts. I'll link those below. And uh, I'll also link my Etsy page if you'd like to support my creative content and buy a copy of my art. Let's get straight into our, work, our readings today. Our readings for today will come from Leviticus chapter 9 and 10, Mark chapter 4 and ch chapter 5. Uh, Psalm chapter 37 and Proverbs chapter 10. And before we begin, as usual, we pray, Lord God, please bless your word to me and to those who are following along. In Jesus' name, amen. So before we go into the Old Testament, let's read from Mark's account. Beginning in chapter 4, verse 26, it says, Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. Jesus said, how can I describe, describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? Hmm, it's like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in its shade. Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they could understand. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. But afterward, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon, a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. Chapter 5 begins by saying, So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. When he was put into chains and shackles, he, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered around the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirit begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hill by, hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, 
and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what had happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs, and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed at what he told them. All right, that's our reading from Mark. Let's go back into the Old Testament. Uh, We started Leviticus uh, a few days ago, and today we will begin in chapter 9, verse 7. Then Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering to purify yourself and the people. Then present the offerings of the people to purify them, making them right with the Lord just as he has just as he has commanded. So Aaron went to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought him the blood, and he dipped his finger in it and put it on the horns of the altar. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Then he burned on the altar the fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The meat and the hide, however, he burned outside the camp. Next Aaron slaughtered the animal for the burnt offering. His sons brought him the blood, and he splattered it against all sides of the altar. Then they handed him each piece of the burnt offering, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. Then he washed the internal organs and the legs and burned them on the altar along with the rest of the burnt offering. Next, Aaron presented the offerings of the people. He slaughtered the people's goats and presented it as an offering for their sin, just as he had first done with the offering for his own sin. Then he presented the uh, burnt offering and sacrificed it in the prescribed way. He also presented the grain offering burning a handful of the flour mixture on the altar in addition to the regular burnt offering for the morning. Then Aaron slaughtered the bull and the ram for the people's peace offering. His sons brought him the blood and he splattered it against all sides of the altar. Then he took the fat of the bull and the ram, the fat of the broad tail, and from around the internal organs along with the kidneys and the long lobes of the livers, He placed these fat portions on top of the breasts of these animals and burned them on the altar. Aaron then lifted up the breasts and right thighs as a special offering to the Lord, just as Moses had commanded. After that, Aaron raised his hands towards the people, toward the people and blessed them. Then, after presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering and the peace offering, he stepped down from the altar. Then Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle, and when they came back out, they blessed the people again, and the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. Fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. Chapter 10 begins by saying, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. So fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up, and they died there before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord meant when he said, I will display my holiness through those who come near me. I will display my glory before all the people. And Aaron was silent. Then Moses called for Mishael and Elzaphan, Aaron's cousins, the sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel. He said to them, Come forward and carry away the bodies of your relatives from in front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. So they came forward and picked them up by their garments and carried them out of the camp, just as Moses had commanded. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not show grief by leaving your hair uncombed or by tearing your clothes. If you do, you will die and the Lord's anger will strike the whole community of Israel. However, the rest of the Israelites, your relatives, may mourn because of the Lord's fiery destruction of Nadab and Abihu. 
but you must not leave the entrance of the tabernacle or you will die, for you have been anointed with the Lord's anointing oil. So they did as Moses commanded. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your descendants must never drink wine or any other alcoholic drink before going into the tabernacle. If you do, you will die. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation. You must distinguish between what is sacred and what is common, what is ceremonially unclean and what is clean. And you must teach the Israelites all the decrees that the Lord has given them through Moses. Then Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, take what is left of the grain offering after a portion has been presented as a special gift to the Lord and eat it beside the altar. Make sure it contains no yeast, for it is most holy. You must eat it in a sacred place, for it has been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the special gifts presented to the Lord. These are the commands I have been given. But the breast and thigh that were lifted up as a special offering may be eaten in any place that is ceremonially clean. These parts have been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the peace offerings presented by the people of Israel. You must lift up the thigh and breast as a special offering to the Lord, along with the fat of the special gifts. These parts will belong to you and your descendants as your permanent right, just as the Lord had commanded. Moses then asked them what had happened to the goat of the sin offering. When he discovered it had been burned up, he became very angry with Eleazar and Dithamar, Aaron's remaining sons. Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sacred area, he demanded. It is a holy offering. The Lord has given it to you to remove the guilt of the community and to purify the people, making them right with the Lord. Since the animal's blood was not brought into the holy place, you should have eaten the meat in the sacred area as I ordered you. Then Aaron answered Moses, Today my sons presented both their sin offering and their burnt offering to the Lord, and yet this tragedy has happened to me. If I had eaten the people's sin offering on such a tragic day as this, would the Lord have been pleased? And when Moses heard this, he was satisfied. All right, let's go to Psalm chapter 37. Uh, We've read up to verse 29, so today we will read verses 30 to 40. The godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. They have made God's law their own, so they will never slip from his path. The wicked wait in ambush for the godly, looking for an excuse to kill them. But the Lord will not let the wicked succeed, or let the godly be condemned when they are put on trial. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. I have seen wicked and ruthless people flourishing like a tree in its native soil, but when I looked again, they were gone. Though I searched for them, I could not find them. Look at those who are honest and good. For a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. But the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them and they find shelter in Him. Amen. That's uh, Psalm chapter 37. Let's go to uh, our Proverbs for today. We'll read from chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. These are wise words. Listen carefully. The godly are showered with blessings. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. We have happy memories of the godly, but the name of a wicked person rots away. Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ and friends, those are our readings for today, February the 20th. Uh, we're making good progress. Uh, we're almost through the month of February. Then we'll be into March's readings. Uh, tune in tomorrow, February the 21st, 